Batangas, officially known as the Province of Batangas Filipino, Liliwigan ng Batangas, is a province in the Philippines located in the Calabarzon region in Luzon. Its capital is the city of Batangas and is bordered by the provinces of Cavite and Laguna to the north and Quezon to the east. Across the Verde Island passages to the south is the island of Mindoro and to the west lies the South China Sea. Poetically, Batangas is often referred to by its ancient name Kumintang. Batangas is one of the most popular tourist destinations near Metro Manila. It is home to the well-known Tall Volcano, one of the Decade Volcanoes, and Tall Heritage Town, a small town that has ancestral houses and structures dating back to the 19th century. The province also has numerous beaches and diving spots including Analao in Mabina, Sombrero Island in Tingloy, Ligpo Island and Sampaguita Beach in Baon, Matabungay in Lien, Punta Fuego in Nasigbu, Calatagan and Laya in San Juan. All of the marine waters of the province are part of the Verde Island Passage, the center of the center of world's marine biodiversity. Batangas City has the second largest international seaport in the Philippines after Metro Manila. The identification of the city as an industrial growth center in the region and being the focal point of the Calabarzon program is seen in the increasing number of business establishments in the city. S. Central Business District CBD, as well as numerous industries operating in the province. S. Industrial Parks Etymology The first recorded name of the province was Kumintang, whose political center was the present-day municipality town, of Balayan. Balayan was considered the most progressive town of the region. An eruption of Tall Volcano destroyed a significant portion of the town, causing residents to transfer to Bonbon, now Tall, the name eventually encompassing the bounds of the modern province. The term Batangan means a raft which the people used so that they could fish in the nearby Tall Lake. It also meant the numerous logs found in the Kalampang River, the body of water that runs through the northeastern portion of the town and assumes the shape of a tuning fork. History Archaic epic Long before the arrival of the Spaniards in the Philippines, large centers of population already thrived in Batangas. Native settlements lined the Pansipit River, a major waterway. The province had been trading with the Chinese since Yuan Dynasty until the first phase of Ming Dynasty in the 13th and 15th century. Inhabitants of the province were also trading with Japan and India. The Philippines' ancestors were Buddhists and Hindus, but far from India and intermixed with animistic beliefs. Archaeological findings show that before the settlement of the Spaniards in the country, the Tagalogs, especially the Batangueños, had attained a semblance of high civilization. This was shown by certain jewelry, made from a chambered nautilus shell, where tiny holes were created by a drill-like tool. The ancient Batangueños were influenced by India as shown in the origin of most languages from Sanskrit and certain ancient potteries. A Buddhist image was reproduced in mold on a clay medallion in bas-relief from the municipality of Kalatagan. According to experts, the image in the pot strongly resembles the iconographic portrayal of Buddha in Siam, India, and Nepal. The pot shows Buddha Amitabha in the Trabanga pose inside an oval nimbus. Scholars also noted that there is a strong Mahayanic orientation in the image, since the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara was also depicted. One of the major archaeological finds was in January 1941, where two crude stone figures were found in Palapit in the municipality of Kalatagan. They were later donated to the National Museum. One of them was destroyed during World War II. Eighteen years later, a grave was excavated in nearby Punta Buaya. Pieces of brain coral were carved behind the heads of the twelve remains that were found. The site was named Lika, meaning, create. The remains were accompanied by furniture that could be traced as early as the 14th century. Potteries, as well as bracelets, stoneware, and metal objects were also found in the area, suggesting that the people who lived there had extensive contact with people from as far as China. The presence of dining utensils such as plates or chalices found with the remains also suggest that prehistoric Batangueños believed in the idea of life after death. Thus, the Batangueños, like their neighbors in other parts of Asia, have similar customs of burying furniture with the dead. 
Like the nearby tribes, the Batangan or the early Batangueños were a non-aggressive people. Partly because most of the tribes in their immediate environment were related to them by blood. Some weapons Batangans used included the Bakyang, bows and arrows, the Bangka, spears, and the Suwan, bolo. Being highly superstitious, the use of a gemet, amulet or talisman, showed that these people believed in the presence of higher beings and other things unseen. The natives believed that forces of nature were a manifestation these higher beings. The term, Tagalog, may have been derived from the word Taga-ilog or river dwellers, referring to the Pasig River located further up north of the region. However, Wang Teh Ming in his writings on Sino-Filipino relations points out that Batangas was the real center of the Tagalog tribe, which he then identified as Ma Yi or Ma I. According to the Chinese imperial annals, Ma Yi had its center in the province and extends to as far as Cavite, Laguna, Rizal, Quezon, Bataan, Bulacan, Mindoro, Marinduque, Nueva Ecija, some parts of Zambales, and Tarlac. However, many historians interchangeably use the term Tagalog and Batangueño. Henry Otley Bayer, an American archaeologist, also showed in his studies that the early Batangueños had a special affinity with the precious stone known as the jade. He named the late Paleolithic period of the Philippines as the Batangas period in recognition of the multitude of jade found in the excavated caves in the province. Bayer identified that the jade cult reached the province as early as 800 BC and lasted until 200 BC. Spanish colonization in 1570, Spanish generals Martin de Goiti and Juan de Salcedo explored the coast of Batangas on their way to Manila and came upon a Malay settlement at the mouth of Pansipat River. In 1572, the town of Tal was founded and its convent and stone church were constructed later. Officially, the province of Bonbon was founded by Spain in 1578, through Friday. Esteban Ortiz and Fr. Juan de Porras. It was named after the name that was given to it by the Muslim natives who inhabited the area. In 1581, the Spanish government abolished Bonbon Province and created a new province which came to be known as Balayan Province. The new province was composed of the present provinces of Batangas, Mindoro, Marinduque, Southeast Laguna, and Camarines. After the devastating eruption of Tall Volcano in 1754, the old town of Tall, present-day San Nicolas, was buried. The capital was eventually transferred to Batangas, now a city, for fear of further eruptions where it has remained to date. In the same years that De Goiti and Salcedo visited the province, the Franciscan missionaries came to Tall, which later became the first Spanish settlement in Batangas and one of the earliest in the Philippines. In 1572, the Augustinians founded Tal in the place of Wawa, now San Nicolas, and from there began preaching in Balayan and in all the big settlements around the lake of Bombon, Tal. The Augustinians, who were the first missionaries in the diocese, remained until the revolution against Spain. Among the first missionaries were eminent men which included Alfonso de Albuquerque, Diego Espinas, Juan de Montoyo, and others. During the first ten years, the whole region around the Lake of Bombon was completely Christianized. It was done through the preaching of men who had learned the first rudiments of the language of the people. At the same time, they started writing manuals of devotion in Tagalog, such as Novenas, and had written the first Tagalog grammar that served other missionaries who came. Foundation of important parishes followed throughout the years, 1572, the Tal Parish was founded by the Augustinians, 1581, the Batangas Parish under Fray Diego Mexica, 1596, Baon Parish administered by the Augustinian missionaries, 1605, Lipa Parish under the Augustinian administration, 1774, Balayan Parish was founded, 1852, Nasigbu Parish, and 1868, Lemery Parish. The town of Nasigbu became an important center of trade during the Spanish occupation of the country. It was the site of the first recorded battle between two European forces in Asia in Fortune Island, Nasigbu, Batangas. In the late part of the 20th century, the inhabitants of Fortune Island discovered a sunken galleon that contained materials sold in the Manila-Acapulco galleon trade. 
Batangas was also among the first of the eight Philippine provinces to revolt against Spain and one of the provinces placed under martial law by Spanish Governor General Ramon Blanco on August 30, 1896. This event was given distinction when Marcella Agoncillo, also a native of the province, made the Philippine flag, which bears a sun with eight rays to represent these eight provinces. American period when the Americans forbade the Philippine flag from being flown anywhere in the country, Batangas was one of the places where the revolutionaries chose to propagate their propaganda. Many, especially the revolutionary artists, chose Batangas as the place to perform their plays. In an incident recorded by Emilia Bonifacio in her diary, the performance of Tanakaling Ginto in the province led not only to the arrest of the company but all of the audience. Later, the play was banned from being shown anywhere in the country. General Miguel Malvar is recognized as the last Filipino general to surrender to the United States in the Philippine-American War. Japanese occupation After the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, the Japanese sent their planes to attack the Philippines, launching major air raids throughout the country. The bombings resulted in the destruction of the Batangas Airport located in Batangas City, of which nothing remains today. Batangas was also a scene of heavy fighting between the Philippine Army Air Corps and the Japanese A6M-0 fighter planes. The most notable air combat battle took place at height of 3,700 meters 12, feet, on December 12, 1941 when six Filipino fighters led by Capt. Jesus Villamor engaged the numerically superior enemy of 54 Japanese bombers and fighter escorts which raided the Batangas airfield. Capt. Jesus Villamor won the battle, suffering only one casualty, Lt. Cesar Basa who was able to bail out on a parachute as his plane was shot down only to be strafed by machine gun fire from the A6M0s, when Gen. Douglas MacArthur ordered the overall retreat of the American Filipino forces to Bataan in 1942. The province was ultimately abandoned and later came under direct Japanese occupation. During this time, the Imperial Japanese Army committed many crimes against civilians, including the massacre of 328 people in Baon, 320 in Tal, 300 in Cuenca, 107 in San Jose, and 39 in Lucero. Liberation as part of the Philippines Campaign, 1944-45, the province's liberation began on January 31, 1945, when elements of the 11th Airborne Division under the U.S. 8th Army went ashore on the beaches of Nasigbu, Batangas. However, Batangas was not the main objective of the invasion force. Instead, most of its units headed north to capture Manila and by March 3, the capital was completely secured. Liberation of Batangas proper by American forces began in March 1945 under the 11th Airborne Division and the 158th Regimental Combat Team, or 158th RCT. The 158th Regimental Combat Team stationed in Nasigbu was tasked to secure the shores and nearby towns of Balayan and Batangas. The 11th Airborne Division from the Tagaytay Ridge would attack the Japanese defenses north of Tall Lake and open the Lipa Corridor. By March 11 the 158th RCT had reached Batangas City. In order to secure the two bays, 158th RCT needed to capture the entire Kalampang Peninsula near the town of Mabina, which was still held by some elements of the Japanese 2nd Surface Raiding Base Force. Fighting continued until March 16 when the whole peninsula was finally captured. Afterwards, the 158th RCT turned northward to meet the Japanese Fuji Force defenses at Mount Makulo in Cuenca on March 19. The 158th RCT disengaged the Japanese on March 23 and were relieved by the 11th Airborne's 187th Glider Infantry Regiment. Another 11th Airborne Division Task Force, the 188th Infantry was ordered to dispatch troops around Batangas City and its remaining frontiers. Meanwhile, the 11th Airborne Division's 511th Parachute Infantry Regiment had begun the opening of the Lipa Corridor at Santo Tomas and Tanawan before being relieved by the 1st Cavalry Division and moving via Tagaytay to Baon and San Jose. The last major offensive for the capture of the Lipa Corridor began when 188th Infantry Task Force from Batangas City left for Lipa on March 24. 
The same that day, the 187th Infantry Task Force launched an attack against the remaining Japanese positions in Mount Makulo. Heavy fighting continued until April 17. The final capture of Mount Makulo came by April 21. The 188th Infantry Task Force met stiff resistance from Fuji Force's 86th Airfield Battalion on March 26. To the north, the 1st Cavalry Division attacked the remaining Japanese defenses in the towns of Santo Tomas and Tanawan and succeeded in linking up with the advancing 187th and 188th Task Forces from the south. Lipa was captured by the 1st Cavalry Division on March 29. The final defeat of the Fuji Force came at Mount Malapuno at the hands of the 511th on May 2, with the capture of Lipa and Mount Malapuno, organized resistance ended in the province. Some elements of the 188th Infantry Task Force were left to clear the Batangas Mountains located southeast of province from the remaining Japanese. Throughout the battle, recognized Filipino guerrilla fighters played an important key role in the advancement of the combined American and Philippine Commonwealth troops, providing key roads and information for the Japanese location of defenses and movements. The 11th Airborne Division and attached Filipino guerrillas had 390 casualties, of which 90 were killed. The Japanese however lost 1,490 men. By the end of April 1945, Batangas was liberated and fully secured for Allied control, thus ending all hostilities. The movements of the military general headquarters and military camp bases of the Philippine Commonwealth Army happened from January 3, 1942 to June 30, 1946 and included the province of Batangas in southern Luzon. During the engagements of the anti-Japanese Imperial military operations in Manila, southern Luzon, Mindoro and Palawan from 1942 to 1945, including the provinces of Rizal, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Mindoro, and Palawan, units of the Philippine Constabulary, with the local guerrilla resistance joined with the U.S. Liberation Military Forces against the Japanese Imperial Armed Forces, under the southern Luzon campaign, local Filipino soldiers of the 4th, 42nd, 43rd, 40 5th, and 46th Infantry Division of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and 4th Constabulary Regiment of the Philippine Constabulary joined the battle for the liberation of Batangas. Post-American period After Douglas MacArthur made his famous landing in the island of Leyte, he came next to the town of Nasigbu to mark the liberation of Luzon. This historic landing is remembered by the people of Batangas every last day of January, a holiday for the Nasugbagueños. After the United States of America relinquished control of the Philippines, statesmen from Batangas featured prominently in the government. These include the legislators Felipe Agoncillo, Galicano Apacible, who later became the Secretary of Agriculture, Ramon Diocno, Apolinario R. Apacible, Expedito Leviste, Gregorio Catagbag, Teodoro Cala, Claro M. Recto, and Jose Laurel Jr. It is also notable that when President Manuel L. Quezon left the Philippines during the Japanese occupation, the Japanese government in the Philippines chose the Batangueño José Laurel Sr. as the de jure president of the Puppet Republic. Geography Batangas is a combination of plains and mountains, including one of the world's smallest volcanoes, Mount Tall, with an elevation of 600 meters 2, feet, located in the middle of the Tall Lake. Other important peaks are Mount Makulot with an elevation of 830 meters, 2720 feet, Mount Talamedam with 700 meters, 2300 feet, Mount Pico de Loro with 664 meters, 2178 feet, Mount Batalao with 811 meters, 2661 feet, Mount Manabo with 830 meters, 2720 feet, and Mount Dagudal with 672 meters, 2205 feet. Batangas has several islands, including Tingloy, Verde Island, Isla Verde, and Fortune Island of Nasigbu. According to Guinness World Records, the largest island in a lake on an island is situated in Batangas, particularly at Vulcan Point in Crater Lake, which rests in the middle of Tall Island in Lake Tall, on the island of Luzon. Administrative divisions Batangas comprises 31 municipalities and 3 cities. Climate 
Batangas falls under two climates, the tropical savanna climate as A, and the bordering tropical monsoon climate M, under the Köppen climate classification. Most of the province belongs to the tropical savanna climate, with well-defined dry and wet seasons. Parts of Batangas lying to the east have unpronounced dry and wet seasons, influenced by the monsoon. Batangas City, the provincial capital, belongs to the tropical savanna climate, but is strongly influenced by the bordering monsoon climate, characterized by short dry seasons and longer wet seasons. Typhoons are a periodic occurrence especially during the southwest monsoon Habagat. Demographics the population of Batangas in the 2015 census was 2,694,335 people, with a density of 860 inhabitants per square kilometer or 2,200 inhabitants per square mile. Tagalogs are the predominant people in Batangas, followed by Baikalanos, Visayans, Cebuanos, and Hiligaynons. Batangas also has one of the highest literacy rates in the country at 96.5%, with males having a slightly higher literacy rate at 97.1% than females with 95.9%. Combined average literacy rate is 96%. Language the dialect of Tagalog spoken in the province closely resembles the old Tagalog spoken before the arrival of the Spanish. Hence, the Summer Institute of Linguistics one, called this province the heartland of the Tagalog language. A strong presence of the Tagalog culture is clearly visible to the present day. Linguistically, Batangueños are also known for their unique affectation of often placing the particles A or GA, equivalent to the particle BA in Filipino, usually as a marker of stress on the sentence, at the end of their spoken sentences or speech, for example, I, U, NA, A. I, yes, indeed. Some even prolong the particle A into A la A, though it really has no meaning in itself. English is widely understood in the province. Spanish is also understood to some extent, especially in the towns of Nasigbu, Tal, and Lemery, which still have significant Spanish-speaking minorities. Visayan is also spoken by a significant minority due to the influx of migrants from Central Philippines. Religion The majority of Batangas S population are religiously affiliated with Roman Catholicism, Iglesia ni Cristo, and Evangelicalism. Other major religions include Islam, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Jesus as Lord Church, Protestantism, Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Economy Products Batangas is known for its fan knife, locally known as Balisong, with its manufacture also becoming an industry in the province. Pineapples are also common in Batangas. Aside from the fruit, the leaves are also useful such that an industry has been created from it. In the municipality of Tal, pineapple leaves are processed to form a kind of cloth known as Yusi, pronounced Husi, from which the Barong Tagalog, the national costume of the Philippines is made. Livestock as an industry is also thriving in Batangas. Cattle from Batangas are widely sought throughout the country. The term backing Batangas, Batangas cow, is associated with the country's best species of cattle. Cattle raising is widely practiced in Batangas such that every Saturday is an auction day in the municipalities of San Juan, Baon and Padre Garcia. Fishing plays a very important part of the economy of the province. Although the tuna industry in the country is centered in General Santos, Batangas is also known for the smaller species of the said fish. The locals even have their own names for it. Some of them are tambacal, yellow-finned berberabe, tambaculus, tulingan, bonito and another species also called bonito but actually the gymnosarda unicolor. There is also an important industry for the tanig. Aside from the South China Sea, Tall Lake also provides a source of freshwater fishes to the country. The lake is home to Sardinella talus or simply talus, a species of freshwater sardine that is endemic to the lake. Tall Lake also provides farmed chanos chanos or bangus. 
There is also a good volume of Oreochromus niloticus niloticus and Oreochromus aureus, both locally called tilapia. It is ecologically important to note that neither Bangus nor tilapia are native to the lake. Thus they are considered an invasive species to the lake. Sugar is also a major industry. After Hacienda Luisita, the country's former largest sugar producer, was broken up for land reform. The municipality of Nasigbu has been the home of the current largest sugar producing company, the Central Azucarera Don Pedro. Rice cakes and sweets are also a strong industry. Some towns, those adjacent to Laguna, have a prosperous bamboo based industry, where several houses and furniture are made of bamboo. Natives say that food cooked in bamboo has an added scent and flavor. Labong or baby bamboo is cooked with coconut milk or with other ingredients to make a Batangas delicacy. The city of Batangas hosts the second most important international seaport in the island of Luzon, serving as a primary entry point for goods from the southern part of the country, and international ports. Developments Batangas Port and Star Batangas City is the principal port for ferry access to Mindoro, Tablas, Romblon, and other islands. Montenegro Lines is the largest of a number of passenger shipping companies operating out of Batangas. Condensate tankers offload at Batangas in sizable quantity. On January 19, 2008, Phase 2 of the Batangas City International Container Port was opened by the Philippines President, and is operated by the Philippine Ports Authority. On the same day, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo also inspected a major road project in southern Tagalog. She then inspected the P1.5 billion, 19.74 km Southern Tagalog Arterial Road, Star Tollway, Stage 2 Phase 1 connecting Lipa and Batangas and the South Luzon Expressway, SLEX, Road Widening, Expansion and the Star Tollway Development Projects in Batangas. Electric Power Distribution Electric power in Batangas is mostly distributed by electric cooperatives, namely the Batangas I Electric Cooperative -E -E -I, and Batangas II Electric Cooperative -E -E The former serves the western part of Batangas, like Nasigbu, Calatagan, Balayan, Lemery, and Tal, while the latter serves the eastern part, like Lipa, Tanawan, Talisay, San Jose, and Rosario. Baon and Aban are served by local utility companies. Santo Tomas, the first Philippine industrial park FPIP, in Tanawan, San Pasqual and Batangas City, however, are served by the Metro Manila-based electric company, Maralca. Some large industrial customers are supplied by the 69,000 volts of transmission grid, operated by National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, Batangas II Electric Cooperative, and Maralca. Generation the province houses three major power plants that generate electricity for the Luzon grid, like the 600 MW Calaca coal-fired power plant in Calaca, the 500 MW, 1000 MW, and 414 MW San Lorenzo Santa Rita San Gabriel combined cycle power plant, and a 1,251 MW Iligan power plant, both in Batangas City. The Kalaka power plant has an initial nameplate capacity of 600 MW, is being expanded to generate 1,300 MW, with an addition of 2 by 350 MW 700 MW capacity in a second power plant, constructed under an agreement between Semirara Mining and Maralca. Most power plants in Batangas, however, use fossil fuels, such as coal and natural gas, and are the subjects because of environmental effects regarding combustion. One power plant to be built at Mabaking, Batangas City faced opposition from environmentalists and the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Lipa, owing to its effect on residents and the aquatic ecosystem on Verde Island Passage. Transportation Roads Batangas has a total of 556 kilometers 345 miles of national roads, mostly paved. The Southern Tagalog Arterial Road, Star Tollway, or E2, Maharlika Highway, N1 and AH26, and Jose P. Laurel Highway, N4, forms the highway backbone of the province, and a network of secondary and tertiary national roads links most of the municipalities. 
The provincial government maintains a network of provincial roads to supplement the national roads and connect municipalities and barangays not connected directly to the main highway network. The Cavite Tagaytay Batangas CTBEX, is a proposed expressway from the municipality of Salang, Cavite up to the town of Nasigbu. CTBEX connects with the proposed Cavite Laguna Expressway, Calix, which will be connecting with Cavitex in Kawit, Cavite and Slex Mamplasan Interchange in Binyan. Laguna serves as a future alternate route for tourists coming from Metro Manila going to the beaches and resorts at the towns of Nasigbu, Lien, and Calatagan in the western part of the province. Water transport Being an entry point to the rest of the archipelago, Batangas has roll-on, roll-off Roro ferry connections with Mindoro and Visayas. The western portion of the Strong Republic Nautical Highway starts at the Batangas Port, and connects with Calapan, Oriental Mindoro. The Batangas International Port serves as another principal port, along with the Manila International Port for inter-island and international cargo shipping, as well as inter-island passenger shipping. Government With the provinces in the island of Panay, Ilocos Sur and Pampanga, Batangas was one of the earliest provinces established by the Spaniards who settled in the country. It was headed by Martin de Goiti and since then has become one of the most important regions of the Philippines. Batangas first came to be known as Bonbon. It was named after Tall Lake, which was also originally called Bonbon. Some of the earliest settlements in Batangas were established in the vicinity of Tall Lake. In 1534, Batangas became the first practically organized province in Luzon. Balayan was the capital of the province for 135 years from 1597 to 1732. In 1732, it was moved to Tal, then the flourishing and most progressive town in the province. It wasn't until 1754 that the capital was destroyed by the Great Tal eruption of 1754. It was in 1889 that the capital was moved to the present, Batangas City. Batangas has been called by some Philippine historians as the Cradle of Noble Heroes, citing the notable number of people from it who were declared Philippine national heroes and those who became leaders of the country. Among them are Teodoro M. Cala, Apolinario Mabina, Jose Laurel, and Felipe Agoncillo. Current officials List of former governors Culture Way of life Maria Cala Catagbac, a Filipino historian, was quoted to call the Batangueños the hybrid Tagalogs. One particular custom in the Batangas culture is the so-called Matanda Sa Dugo, lit, older by blood, practice wherein one expresses respect not because of age but because of consanguinity. During the early times, the custom of having very large families were very common. Thus, a particular person's uncle could be of the same age, or even younger than himself. Because of the custom, the older person would still address the younger one with an honorary title such as Tio, Tio or simply Kuya if they can no longer establish the actual relationship or add the honorific Ho Po in their sentences when addressing the younger instead of the other way around. This often draws confusion from the other provinces who are not accustomed to such practices. This practice exists until today. Batangueños are very regionalistic. When one learns that another in the room is also from Batangas, the two would be together until the end of the event. In workplace settings, a Batangueno may also express preference for another Batangueno as long as the workplace regulations allow. Thus, the running joke on the Batangas Mafia. They also tend to live in a large extended family. It has been observed that a piece of land remains undivided until the family connection becomes too difficult to establish actual blood relations. Marriages between relatives of the fifth generation is still restrained in the Batangan culture even if Philippine laws allow it. Batangueños have been known for their religious practices, where devotees of the Catholic religion perform rituals such as dances, subli, and chants lua, lua, to express their faith. One of these is the ritual called Passion, Passion based on the Passion of Jesus Christ in which religious chants are recited during the Lenten season. In May, the people of Baon and Alatagtag celebrate the feast day of the Mahal na Pun ng Sta. 
Cruz, lit. Lord of the Holy Cross, a ritual dance called the Subli is made to honor the Poon. In the town of Tal, they celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of Quezase and San Martin de Tours a two-day celebration where a procession begins from the Shrine of the Virgin going towards the Pansipit River from which the fluvial procession and another procession towards the Basilica are made in honor of the Virgin Mary. Fiestas in other towns usually start in the month of May and last up to the first day of June, usually the plaza near the church becomes the center of activities. Mythology and literature Scholars also identified that the ancient Batangueños, like the rest of the Tagalog tribe, worshipped the supreme creator, known as Baithala. Lesser gods like Mayari, the goddess of the moon and her honorary brother Apalake, god of the sun, were also present. Dambana practices are also present in the province. For literature, Padre Vicente Garcia came to be known when he wrote an essay to defend José Rizal's Noli Mi Tangere. In 2004, the province of Batangas gave Domingo Landicho, familiarly called Ingo by Batangueños, who was born in the province the Dangal ng Batangas Pride of Batangas, award for being the people's poet. Music Musicologists identified Batangas as the origin of the Kumintang, an ancient war song, which later evolved to become the signature of Filipino love songs the Kundiman. From the ancient Kumintang, another vocal music emerged, identified as the Awit. The Haluna, a psalm-like lullaby, is also famous in some towns, especially Baon. During the Lenten season, the Christian passion narrative, called Pasayan by the natives, is expected in every corners of the province. In fact according to scholars, the very first printed version of the Pasayan was authored by a layman from Rosario named Gaspar Aquino de Bellin. Although de Bellin's version was printed in 1702, it is still debated whether there were earlier versions. Debates may also be done while singing. Batangueños are known for the duplo, a sung debate where each lines of the verse must be octosyllabic, and the karagatan, a sung debate where each lines of the verse must be dodecasyllabic, the latter, whose literal meaning is ocean, got its name from the opening lines. Always, the karagatan is opened by saying some verses that eludes the depth of the sea and comparing it to the difficulty of joining the debate. And as mentioned above, the debate must be sung. Batangas is also the origin of the balatao. Aside from being a form of vocal music, the balatao is also a form of dance music. The balatao, together with the subli is the most famous form of dance native to Batangas. Architecture and sculpture As shown in its ancient churches, Batangas is home to some of the best preserved colonial architectures in the country, especially evident in the municipality of Tal. Though not as popular as the carving industry of Laguna, Batangas is still known for the sculptures engraved in furniture. Often, altar tables coming from Batangas were called the Friar's Choice because of their delicate beauty. According to Milagros Covarubias Jamir, another Filipino scholar, the furniture that came from Batangas during the colonial times was comparable to the beautiful furniture from China. The build of the furniture was so exquisite, nails of glues were never used. Still, the Batangueños knew how to maximize the use of hardwoods. As a result, furniture made about a hundred years ago are still found in many old churches and houses even today. Museums. Museo ng Katipunan, Barangay Bulaklakan, Lipa Apolinario Mabina Shrine, Marcella Agoncillo Historical Landmark, Barangay Talaga, Tanawan, Batangas Miguel Malvar Hospital, Leon a Passable Historical Landmark, Sto. Tomas, Batangas Museo ng Batangas at Aklatang Panlalawigan, includes the Dr. Jose P. Laurel Library, Tanawan, Batangas Flora and fauna The Malabayabas, or Philippine teak, is endemic to Batangas. The province is also home to the Kabag, Haplonicteris fischera, one of the world's smallest fruit bats. In the municipality of Nasigbu, wild deer still inhabit the remote areas of Barangay Looc, Papaya, Bulahan, and Dayap. 
In the second half of 2006, scientists from the United States discovered that the Sulu-Sulawesi Triangle has its center at the Isla Verde Passage, a part of the province. According to the study made by the American marine biologist Dr. Kent Carpentier, Batangas seas host more than half of the world's species of coral. It is also home to dolphins and once in a while, the passage of the world's biggest fish, the whale shark or the butanding, as the locals call it may be observed. The municipality of San Juan has a resident marine turtle or pawican. Pawicans like the olive ridley sea turtle, leather back sea turtle, and green sea turtle can be seen in Nasigbu up to the present. Notable people Dennis Datu, Filipino field reporter of ABS-CBN Erwin Agalon, Filipino field reporter of Radio Inquirer DZIQ 990 kHz and Inquirer 990 Television. Alyssa Valdez, is a Filipino volleyball player. She was a member of the Collegiate Varsity Volleyball Team of Ateneo de Manila University in both indoor and beach volleyball. Kim Fajardo, is a Filipino volleyball athlete. She is a former team captain of the De La Salle University women's volleyball team. Gaudencio Rosales, Filipino Cardinal and Archbishop who has served as the 31st Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Manila, 6th Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Lipa, Batangas and 2nd Bishop of the Diocese of Malaybalay, Bukidnon. Reynaldo Evangelista, Filipino Bishop, currently the 5th Bishop of the Diocese of Imus, Cavite and formerly the 3rd Bishop of the Diocese of Boac, Marinduque. References External links Media related to Batangas at Wikimedia Commons Batangas Travel Guide from Wikivoyage Geographic data related to Batangas at OpenStreetMap Official website of the Provincial Government of Batangas